The, the concept that there are microbes in the soil that symbiotically get along with microbes in a cow's gut. Um, it, uh, how that works, I don't know, but it, it sure seems to work. And if you put, well, uh, a sheep's got a rumen too, so you, you put either one of them out in a pasture or a, in a crop field and you allow them to recycle the, the material and feed it back to the microbes in the soil and uh, the benefits are astronomical. Uh, well, we have, we have proof of the benefits. Yeah, um, a couple years ago, after I'd listened to Gabe Brown speak, I said, I'm gonna try what he did and see if he knows what he's talking about. So we took a 45 acre field and we, we took it out of crop production and we planted to a cover crop and, and grazed it twice that year. Yep. And then the next spring, we weren't sure what we were gonna do yet. And the next spring, the sweet clover came back and before we knew it, it was shoulder tall. So, well, now we know what we're gonna do here. And we grazed it down again for that year. And the following year, we, well, when we grow corn, we do, we do it with a strip tiller. We, we put the 30 inch rows and we put the fertilizer eight inches in the ground. Um, so Eli ran some tests all the way across that field where he, one strip was zero fertilizer, the next strip was half fertilizer, the okay, third the strip. fertilizer was NPK or just one? All three. All three. Okay, all yeah, three together. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we had what we considered the right blend to grow 175 bushel corn. So that was our top amount we put on. And we did half of that and, and none at all. And when we harvested it, we were surprised to find out that where we put on a half a rate of fertilizer, we maxed out our yield. So the two years of cover crop had really released a lot of nutrients back to the soil. The, the zero rate still went up about 150, 160. Yeah. Yeah. So you raised 150 to 160 bushels of corn on zero N, zero P, zero K. Yes. Correct. Correct, yes. I think that's, that's really important. My brother and I have always treated the opening day of pheasant season as a national holiday. And there was a time there when we couldn't find very many pheasants anymore. And so we started making an effort. Right now in South Dakota, we're supposed to have one of the lowest pheasant numbers ever. It's not true on our land.